Amazon Web Services supports delegated access to your AWS environment. In this video, I demonstrate using Microsoft Active Directory, Active Directory Federation Services, Security Assertion Markup Language, or SAML 2.0, and EC2 resource level permissions to provide single sign-on and fine-grained access to your AWS resources by simply using Active Directory Group Membership. Amazon Web Services recently added support for SAML, an open standard used by many identity providers. This new feature enables federated single sign-on, which lets users sign into the AWS console or make programmatic calls to AWS APIs by using assertions from a SAML-compliant identity provider, like Active Directory Federation Services, or ADFS. Since most organizations already have Microsoft Active Directory deployed in their corporate environment, this becomes a natural way to provision and restrict access to AWS resources. This video demonstrates the use of this functionality after ADFS Federation to AWS has been established. I will touch on a few of the key components. First is the use of AWS IAM, or Identity and Access Management, roles. Instead of creating AWS accounts for all of our corporate users, we will use AWS roles and map these roles to the Active Directory groups in our enterprise. In my example here, I have created four IAM roles, ADFS admins, ADFS development, ADFS production, and ADFS QA. Associated with an ADFS role is an IAM policy that specifies permissions for the role. Let's first look at the ADFS admins role and its IAM policy. As you would expect for an administrator, it allows for all actions against all EC2 resources. Now let's look at the ADFS development role. The policy for this role is far more restrictive. First, it only allows the describe action for all EC2 resources. Then, which makes sense for a developer, it allows all actions against all EC2 resources, but only if the resource is tagged with environment equals development. Here you can see the condition for the tag. Now that we have the AWS roles established, let's take a look at our Active Directory. This is where the enterprise admins will want to manage AWS access. In our example, we have four Active Directory groups with names that are very similar to and correlate to the AWS roles we just looked at. We also have a user named Bob. Bob is a developer. So we are going to add Bob to the AWS developer Active Directory group. This will give Bob the privileges associated with the ADFS development IAM role that we looked at previously. We don't need to create an ID for Bob on AWS. Now let's try it out. Since Bob is a developer, and we have added him to the AWS Development Active Directory group, Bob should only have limited access to AWS. Here we have a domain session established for user Bob in the Contoso.com Active Directory domain. Next we go to a web page that is provided by Active Directory Federation Services. This is the default page that comes with ADFS. Customers would most likely create a page that is much prettier with their company logo. By selecting Amazon Web Services, ADFS logs us on to AWS, but only with the permission associated with the ADFS development IAM role that Bob is a member of. Let's see if these permissions really work. First, let's try to do something with S3, our Amazon Simple Storage Service. Now, if you remember, our policy for development 
only gave access to the EC2 service, so Bob should not be able to do anything with S3. And as you can see, that is the case. Bob has no permissions for S3. Now let's see if we can really control resource level access through tagging. We have two servers. Server 2 is tagged with environment equals development. And server 1 has a tag of environment equals production. Because we only enabled permissions to the development IAM role if the instance was tagged with the environment equals development, we should not be able to perform actions on server 1. Let's see if we can stop the instance. We should not be able to. And as you can see, we are not allowed to stop the instance. Now let's see if we can stop server 2. We should be able to stop this instance. And as you can see, we can. This video demonstrated using Microsoft Active Directory, Active Directory Federation Services, Security Assertion Markup Language, and EC2 Resource Level Permissions to provide single sign-on and fine-grained access to AWS resources. Once this is configured, enterprise administrators can easily utilize Active Directory group membership to manage access to AWS resources.